Hello everybody, this is Mander. Welcome to my first, yeah, second video, but first part of the real tutorial. So, it will be about Project Spark again, and we'll try here to make a MOBA. I will right away create a new project, so create, and then an empty world. While it is creating, let's... I want to show you what is a MOBA. So you've got plenty of different uh, MOBAs that exist. It's really a nice trend, it's really a popular game. Here I've taken as example the defense of the Enchiant. So you can see I have a hero here. I can move it with a standard FPS, uh, uh, sorry, RTS moves. I can click where I want him to go. I have a shop here though, where I can shop for various items and uh, I will have some waves of creeps so now I, oh yeah god I must wait 45 seconds but basically I will have waves of creeps coming from here and they will go to the other side of the map when they will talk each other when they will see each other they will just fight this is purely um, controlled by their artificial intelligence I have absolutely no control over that the only thing I will have to do is to kill these enemies and the final goal of the game will be to kill this building here which is called the Enchiant. Uh, this is very simple but it's very addictive. If you just try it out you will see. So let me just close Dota because it will be resource consumption so otherwise and now let me get back to Project Spark. So here is my newly created world. So you have seen that we are the bad guys and the good guys. So as as explained you in the uh, previous tutorial, let's make a little painting here. So I will use here this little tool to generate actually uh, here grass for the good guys because they like grass and the green things. Let's say they're they're elves. Yeah, they're elves. And here for the bad guys I will make a desert. This is quick, really quick painting. This is good enough I think for the map. You can further refine it at home, make beautiful landscapes and stuff. I'm really interested into the logic here. Um, so this first tutorial here we will we'll try to make each of the characters spawn and uh, behave correctly. Then we'll look at the other uh, things on the following video. So as I explained you on the introduction, I will use, oh sorry, here, this tiles here, yeah, this one. Uh, this is called the prop tiles. So I will put here a goblin and I will put it a guy. So let's hit play and see what happens. So you can see that they have some base intelligence and actually they're just fighting each other. Um, this is, I mean, this is okay, but this is not what I want. Uh, for example, um, the goblin is not, yeah, okay, he's attacking, but not that, that good. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brain of the goblin, and I will explain it. So here at the beginning, I just say that this goblin uh, will join the team two once, as I explained in the introduction. Then on the second line here, I will say that uh, the enemies, that is my nearest objects, object, will become my enemy. So this here, this tile here, is a variable. So it's an object. Uh, if you're a developer, it's a pointer to the to the enemy. So I am actually saying, okay, my enemy will be um, the near enemy or the player neutral player so actually I don't want uh, the neutral player to be here so I'll just right click on those tiles and I will just delete them and here on the third line I'm saying that if the distance to my enemy is less than 20 and the distance to my enemy is greater than 2 I am moving toward my enemy. So here on the line 4 you can see that actually it's a bit on the right, it's called indentation and this relates to the fact that it will apply on the condition described in the, the line where the indentation was were more to the left. So here you can see that the when condition is on line 3, the do condition is empty and actually the do condition will be on line 4 and this will apply because we have one level of indentation. If you don't want it, you can just press on the 4 and just put it on the left. 
and uh, this will be so it will always move toward my enemy whereas if I indent it it will take the condition on the previous line which is uh, this one here on line 3 so this is very interesting because actually what is going to happen if the distance is more than 20 what shall I do you have seen I mean you have not seen but I have told you that the waves of creep are just heading towards the enemy building so let's just do the same here so let's add here a little what what can I take what could be a good goblin objective uh, do I have coins yeah this rustic tower this is the goblin objective let's make it a bit smaller yeah okay cool this is the goblin objective so actually now let's go back to the brain and here I can just right click on light 5 I click insert and here I can just indent so as before and here I can use the keyword else else will say if this condition here is false then you will execute this condition here and here I want to tell if the distance so I'm typing it because it's faster uh, you can fi find all these tiles uh, by just crawling on the menus but this is faster uh, so else distance to my enemy and here is bigger uh, sorry it's greater or equal to 20 and in this case I want to move toward and here I can use on the tile here object I can put in world picker and here I can select any props on the world so I will select this thing here so you can see that now if the distance is greater than 20 I will move toward the rustic tower if the distance is less than 2 it's perfect because actually this is attack range so I don't want to do anything in this case so now if I hit play okay then it doesn't work of course because actually the, go the, the guy is too so let's look a bit oh okay so I have another problem let's look a bit at my player here you can see that my player is joining the team one I'm just deleting this line so the player will be neutral so you can see that actually now the goblin doesn't care anymore about me he's just adding toward this 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 little tower and this is exactly what I want him to do let's make another test here let's put here this guy so he is moving here perfect perfect oh it's maybe okay now they see each other he stops so you can see that actually is correctly stopping let's look a bit more about the logic of the goblin here on line 6 so where I haven't looked what is exactly what does this mean you can see it's quite a big big line right and actually that's not very complicated if I remove this the goblin will simply attack I mean he will just attack and when he has finished attacking he will attack so it will be attacking like 0.3 seconds each 0.3 seconds and that's pretty fast here I am just putting a countdown timer and a variable which is called pause attack so I will actually wait until pause attack is equal to 0 before executing line 7 and line 8 so uh, for example here I am setting the pause attack to 1 to 3 so a random number I will just set it to 1 because I think that's good enough yeah perfect and here the countdown timer will wait 1 second before executing this please don't forget the loop because otherwise the timer will only work once so the first attack and then it will just attack every time so don't forget to do the loop it will just reset the chronometer um, now when I mean the attack it's like attack uh, speed you see it's like exactly an attack cooldown and now if the distance of my enemy is less than two so in attack range I will just attack him so actually this is exactly all the logic that I would like but you can see if I select the good guy he has another logic which is far more complex and actually I don't need it this is not a problem because the logic of the two minions should be exactly the same so if I take my goblin here I go in his brain I press here on the brain uh, sorry not on the brain on the two wheels here up here here 
yeah, here. Uh, yeah. Here you can see that I can put copy page and I will copy the brain of the copy. And here I can go to the human guy and I will just say delete the page because I don't care about what was written and I will just paste it. Let me just change a few things. The guy here, the human, is in team 1. Everything is exactly the same except the objective because he must be heading toward the other way. So let's put a half for him and let's put here toward not the rustic tower but here. And let's look a bit how how does this work. You can see that they're running toward Okay, and now they're running toward each other and they're attacking exactly the same way. So it's exactly the same logic. You can see though that the human is attacking a bit faster. That's because his ani attack animation is a bit faster. Uh, and the goblin is never attacking because actually when you receive an hit, you, you just reset uh, all the attack animation. So it actually will never attack. So to fix this, you just have to select the goblin and you can just press the two wheels here. You can go to properties, combat, and here on hit reaction, you just disable everything. And here, actually, the goblin won't care anymore of being hit or not. Let me just put it a bit here, a bit uh, out of the way, so we can just see that it works. So you can see that they are both heading towards their respective objectives. They change direction, and now let the fight begin. You can see that the goblin now is still attacking, even if it receives some hits. So, of course, you will need some further balancement because now the human doesn't have this. But, this is enough for the tutorial today. Uh, on the next tutorial, we'll look how to make these enemies spawn in waves. Okay? So, like, I will put, I guess, two melee guys and one range. I will also code one range guy. So, I hope you like this video and... Um, Please comment it, tell me what you think about it, what you would like to do if I'm going too slow, too fast. That will be very interesting for me. Thank you very much for following and see you next time. Bye.